Hello here, 11. Welcome to our fourth video here for our 10th unit. The unit is measurement. The exercise is scientific notation. Now, scientists, you know, sometimes they use really big numbers and really small numbers. Things that don't even fit very neatly in our metric system. Sure, they use the metric system, but they've got to use either stacks and stacks of decimal places, perhaps, or so many zeros on the end that it's really quite a nuisance. Instead, we use this thing called scientific notation, where we start with a, uh, a nice manageable number, somewhere between 1 and 10. Right, it can be decimal, absolutely a decimal. Somewhere, no less than 1, no more than 10. And we indicate that as a multiple of a power of 10. That might be times 10 to the 1, which is times 10. 10 to the 2 is times 100. That sort of puts two zeros on the end. 10 to the power of 23, that would put 23 zeros on the end of the number you've written down. On the end, other hand, we could have negative indices. So I might have, uh, let's say, 4.5 times 10 to the negative 2. That means to divide it by 100 means you get 0 0.045. Hmm. Okay. Now, it saves us using so many zeros. Really, that's what scientific notation is for. Let's have a look here. In example 5, we're going to express these numbers in scientific notation. So, oh, right, get my red pen going. There we are. And hit precision mode. Okay. So, we're going to have to write 4.03. Don't worry about the zeros on the end because they're not significant. We just wrote the significant figures down. Now, this is times 10 to the power of what? Well, how many times would I have to move my decimal place? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's times 10 to the power of 12. Okay, there's our first one. Second one here. Now, this one is going to be 5.6. Just the significant figures. Now, this is times 10 to the power of, because it's a decimal, we've got to go the other way. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 10 to the negative 4. Now, this one here, we're going to have to pull out the calculator and see how this works. Okay. There are ways of doing it without the calculator, but let me show you a button here that will help us out a bit. There's my calculator. Mm, nearly all fixed in the screen. That'll work it out for me. Let's turn it on. Now what we want to do is 4.08. Oops, not working properly. Nothing ever is around here, is it? That's not doing the trick. Okay, so we say 4.08. And see this button down here? I'll use that. Gives me times 10 to the power of... Okay, I've got that. Now I can just go times 2.33 times 10 to the power of 2. Now I'm guessing here we should get something like hmm, 8 point something times 10 to the power of, I'm hoping, 6. Uh, it didn't really do it for me. So I get that answer there. All right, that's. So we're going to write that down as 9.5064. Now, times 10 to the power of what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to move the decimal place 6 spots. Okay, so 9.5064. 9.5064 times 10 to the power of 6. Okay, like that. That's significant figures. No, it's not. That's scientific notation. Right, we include the significant figures when we do this. Okay, you tend not to round off any of the significant figures. Keep all of them. Uh, but it always starts with a small manageable number between 1 and 10. And multiply it by a power of 10. Right? You've got that little button on your calculator, times 10 to the power of something, or it might say EXP on yours. But anyway, that's it for this video. If you've got any questions, jot them down. See you in class.